so to start with a refresh, uh, we were tr trying a six-week program, which ended up expanding to seven weeks, uh, called Summer of Tick 80. This was a group of people meeting weekly to work on uh, writing their own um, Tick 80 games. Tick 80 is a retro fantasy console that gives you like 8-bit style graphics, primitive sound, sprite editor, a bunch of stuff kind of like limits your choices but also gives you a complete toolkit all in one place in theory. Um, and so uh, we had five participants, which I think was a pretty reasonable number for a first try at this. And uh, we had three games come out of it. Um, so uh, now Luke was not going to have a game, but uh, do you want to start with sharing what your thoughts on, were of it? Yeah. Um, so uh, I did go to the first meeting. Um, I hadn't touched it at all at that point. I think I downloaded uh, the Tick 80 like earlier that day. So I really had no idea what, was, what I was doing. Um, and then by the second meeting, uh, I did put like something together or like I had started something, uh, basically like a sort of like something along the lines of the old, really old Sierra games, like the old uh, like King's Quest games, if you're familiar with those, where you can like walk around with the arrow keys and then the text parser where you type commands and you'll open door or look room or whatever. Uh, so I kind of like had the basic scaffolding of that done, but um, never fully implemented the parser. Um, and then got COVID and then um, ran out of excuses uh, to not come to meetings. So. <laughs> but uh, no, it was really cool. Um, I do want to continue with that project when I have more time, but uh, I think I just kind of so the question that I have for everyone who I can apply it to is if you were starting over on a new experience, would you use Tick80 again? Uh, yeah, I think so. And what language did you choose? Lua. And would you choose that again? Probably. I think it would be interesting to mess around with JavaScript since I have experience in that. But... Uh, I really liked Lua. Like, um, I was intimidated at first just because I had never written it or really like seen any of it. But uh, yeah, it, it did. Once I got the hang of it, yeah, it was super natural, super like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, all three games uh, will be posted somewhere at some point. Currently, only one of them has been, but we'll be showing all three of them. Nathan Hefley could not be here. Uh, I did ask him those questions. He said he went with JavaScript for his language from the get-go. Uh, he said that if he was trying to do something that could fit in an 8-bit thing, he would absolutely do it again. Um, and he, it turns out, likes writing games. He's apparently made actual money writing Lua games for the little yellow Playdate console. Uh, not enough to pay for the console yet, but money is <laughs> any money is a good excuse. Um, so anyway, here is what he did. Oh, um, it is, click to play, let's make that full screen first. See, it makes you relive the whole experience. And it looks simple, but I mean, I actually think it's pr really fun. Uh, it worked for limited amount of time spent on it. I mean, this is, well, tough to play while it's craned around backwards, but I mean, I actually <laughs> probably spent a good 30 minutes playing this myself. Um, so, uh, and he's put that for on itch.io so people can contribute money if they want to it. It'll be interesting to see if anyone does. I'm not sure how confident I am about putting mine quite there. I might just go with like the Tick80 catalog, which is full of less good games that probably don't deserve to be on itch, but we'll see how much I get it polished. Um, for my own experience, I went with Lua, because that's kind of like the default expectation with the Tick80. Um, I 
would not do, I would you consider doing TIC80 again? Uh, I really struggled against the, they want all your code to be in one file and kind of fighting some of the, against their restrictions. Um, I ended up spending a bunch of time trying to write a bundler to, to let me put Lua in separate files, run unit tests in a standalone Lua interpreter, and then bundle it back up into the one file they want, uh, which probably would have been better spent polishing or you know working on the game. I will probably end up releasing that bundler separately. Um, and uh, but yeah, I would, I would if I do it again, I'll be definitely trying out the Python option on that. Um, something more familiar. Let me get further into sort of game. I had to cut back on my vision repeatedly. <laughs> throughout it, uh, which I think was true of everyone, but I don't know exactly how much other people did. Um, so I had advertised that I would probably be doing a, uh, um, a combination of uh, bust a move, a bubble shooter with missile command, and uh, ended up switching it to being a more generic match three game to simplify it and then ended up simplifying quite a lot more beyond that. But um, here is what I have. Um, now this is right in the Tick80 program directly instead of being published to a website. Also, as you saw, saw you can put Tick80 games straight in websites so that people can don't have to download or install anything. You can also export it as standalone executables for various platforms. Um, I, well, I covered that stuff in the previous talk. So here's what I came up with. Uh, the matching is buggy, so it doesn't all, like right here, you know, this should auto match on any reasonable match, but it doesn't auto match things that fell into place, so always, so you have to switch two tiles on those, but you know, you get the, you match tiles, it shoots down the missiles. Um, so, you know, it's easy for me to feel kind of disappointed on how it ended up so far. I will probably do a little bit more polishing, but probably not a ton more. Uh, but I had to really tear it away from my kids to be able to take my laptop to come here. <laughs> so there is that endorsement for it. Um, so let's see, where was I on my notes? Uh, um, so Josh Huber. Sure. All right, so mine went for what I imagine is everyone's favorite style of game, an escort mission. <laughs> so the, the premise is you are a robot trying to save the last of humans from an alien invasion. Humans are kind of dumb. So the only thing you do not control your movements outside the little robot around. You will, you can fire at aliens. You can get the human to chase a snack. <laughs> it will, it will snake, chase snacks in, in, in above danger. Once it sees danger, it will run away from the danger. Um, and that's pretty much the, the fullness of the game so far. Um, pathing is bad. <laughs> um, and I spent far more trying to figure out how to, how the map is drawn. So you, you draw the map and then you draw your uh, sprites on top of it. I thought the command was you're drawing coordinates on the map, so I had all my behavior on that first coordinate, and if you're at all, I'd, I'd slot on to that. What it is when you do that screen command is it's coordinates on the screen. So I was originally panning the, the, uh, 
the camera along with the character and drawing sprites thinking that I had a whole bunch of Cartesian coordinates I didn't actually have. So there was a lot of weird, weird things going on that took me a while to figure out what the issue was. So essentially the idea of the game is, is you're going to lead this human through a bunch of puzzle levels and, and, and try and, and herd aliens with your repulsor beam in order to drive your human into a safe spot and win. Um, that's pretty much as far, the, these, these two areas are pretty much as far as I've, I've gotten in the time allotted. So I'll, I'll drive him off, off screen into this very little <laughs> weird place full of bullets. Um, but eventually there will be a goal, there will be several more aliens than the little, little uh, octopus guys with more behaviors. And that's pretty much it for that one. Um, these are static for now. I was going to, to toy around with random generation once I get physics figured out. But right now, projectiles will bounce around. Um, aliens will figure out shortest path by just uh, taking the, the character's position, taking the diff, and start heading straight there. And the... The aliens will run into walls, like right now. This, this, this alien wants to really get to the human, but it can't figure out the wall. <laughs> so the aliens are also not very bright. No, the aliens are not very bright. Either. <laughs> no. And right now I have a limited okay. range, so you have the time to uh, like figure out where the alien is and, and plan your path. Um, but that's the game so far. Um, that's about it. I, I chose Python because I've tried Lua in the past and I didn't like it for a lot of the same reasons you did. Um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably continue playing around with this and, and get it out up on the Tick80 site sometime in the next month or so once I actually have a playable game. So. so would you do something like this again? Yeah, it was fun. Would you do it with Tick80 again or would you rather try a different engine? Um. I've tried Pico 8, and that is Lua only. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> and would you stick with Python? Hmm? Yeah, I like Python. Yeah. I'm just familiar with it. <laughs> no? Regarding the graphics, I mean, what, what parts of the Neptune and the, the guy and the Venus are, are kind of out of the box? Did you do all their stuff? Oh, this is, this is all my inspired artwork. Because if someone else did this, there'd be much, much nicer. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a fairly fairly easy that, little editor. I looked through the Tick80 catalog, and I, you know I think that that's very on the good side of characteristic for what people often do. I mean, yeah, there's some people who go a lot harder, but I think this is a pretty representative of something that looks pretty good for the platform. Like the, the tea game in the beginning with those trees. Those trees are really nice, through, yeah. Through the trees that through the yeah, trees I don't know. I did not ask him where what the source of his artwork was. Yeah. But yeah, for, well, there for, certainly is no shortage of pre made artwork packs for people to grab and use for free. Yeah, yeah trees and such. It's it's a it's a fairly Nice little editor for doing little bits of art there. I don't think any of us delved super far into sound effects, and I don't think anyone did anything with music in the end. But they do have built-in sound they, effects and music editors. They do have this sound effect where you can pick a waveform. Now, did you make speed. those sound effects yourself, or did you find yeah. somebody's pack? I, I tinkered around and, and got an effect cool. that I liked. But, but yeah, you can do that, and then, like he he said, you can you can set up your own sound. So if you can, this one, if I had time, I was just going to rip some else, someone else's work off and, and give myself a score. But because <laughs> I'm not musically inclined, but I did want to give give music to the game. <laughs> so, anyone have any other questions for Josh? 
All right. All right. So to reflect on the thing overall, um, I think that uh, when we all kind of went our own way and didn't really work together at all, fine, it's a sort of well made. Uh, I have kind of pictures that maybe if we clean up and use these a little bit, um, but you know, maybe we need more than five people for that really. <laughs> You know, we didn't really do any tutorial time or that. Uh, you know, everyone had some basic idea of it, so it was pretty much just launched straight into the code. Um, you know, I definitely liked having a six-week activity. You know, sep like separate from the regular meetups. I liked that it was something that had a specific beginning and end rather than being something that would go forever. You know, I probably wouldn't do. Uh, if somebody had a game development meetup monthly, I probably wouldn't do that. But if you know, I would absolutely do something like this again. And uh, I don't know that it's going to be game development, but we're probably going to look at trying to run another six-week series once or twice next year uh, on some sort of topic. So be thinking of things people might want to do. Um, and we'll probably be talking about that more in later on. Um, but we don't have any definite plans yet. It's just that you know we like this and want to repeat it. Um, so did anyone have any questions? Yes, Alex. Uh, so you mentioned that there were no teams, uh, and from your first talk you mentioned that the, it doesn't really have like an export function, so how would, how would the team... Okay, so, so if you use the pro version okay. that is in theory $10, okay. then you can export actual source code okay. in plain text. I think I mentioned that uh, back in my talk. Now that you mentioned it. Um, it is open source. It's not like they're hiding this behind a closed source fork of it. So if you didn't want to pay the money, you could just compile it yourself. Um, I think everybody ended up paying the money because it's only 10 bucks and it supports the people doing it. Okay. But um, so yeah, every, uh, as far as I know, everyone chose to use their own text editor instead of limiting themselves to the built-in text editor and that meant using the pro version. Um, so yeah. Any other? Yes. Itch.io is an independent game publishing website. It has no gatekeeping process to it. So anyone can create an account and release their games there. They can make them free. They can make them by donation. They can make them paid. Uh, some people put game tools there. That's where you go to buy the pro version of Ticketing if you're going to pay for it is to itch.io. Um, I mean, I think I don't know, know a whole lot about it. I. I knew it existed, but I ha haven't really used it. Uh, so I think I've covered what I know about it. Yes? I, when you did your talk, I saw Move was the only option. You mentioned JavaScript or Python. Are there any other options? Um, well, I know I mentioned more, but apparently it didn't stick because you had, had asked me about something about the more exotic languages, and I mentioned Wren and Fennel at that time. Um, so, I think those, uh, the, uh, Python, Lua, JavaScript, TypeScript, Wren, and Fennel, I think is the current officially supported list. Um, frankly, I'm surprised that they haven't put BBC Basic into it, uh, but um, it's an open source project, so I suppose somebody could come along and do that at some point. Uh, you know, there are definitely some forks out there. I know some people have made forks for, uh, to, that specifically to use for music visualizing, because um, it doesn't support audio input, so they added audio input to it. Other people have done forks for, to facilitate uh, competitive live coding with it, so you'll have like four people writing Tick80 code on separate computers at the same time uh, in a, you know, gets voted on at the end of that, you know, 30 minutes or an hour or whatever the time frame is for it. Uh, you know, so there's a bunch of people forking it for related but not identical purposes. Any other questions? Yes? I'm curious how, like, the project went on for six weeks. How much time did you spend? How much, you know, like a number of hours? Um, well, we ended up adding one extra week to it. Okay. Uh, so... Um, 
the most times, you know, the meeting was for, we said 60 minutes, but some of them ended up being 90 minutes. Uh, and I probably spent, I don't know, three or four hours a week beyond that on it. Um, and as I said, I spent a lot of time fighting with the, you know, wanting to be able to do multiple files and unit tests and things that are kind of against the, its target. So, you know, a lot of that kind of went toward, more towards that side than actually on the get, getting through the game. Any other? Yes, Zach. Um, I would say that if applicable, maybe it's slightly more on some basics of how it works on the first meeting. You could have saved like Josh a bunch of time, um, <laughs> probably other people too. Uh, Tick 80's documentation is not the most user friendly. I'm not sure why they've chosen to write it the way they have. Um, it looks, it, well, it's very, it, it certainly has a retro aesthetic to the way they put it together, uh, but the, I wish they made it a bit more intro friendly. So there's a lot of things that aren't immediately obvious that you have to either learn from looking through the forums or other people's code or experimenting. Um, so, but I mean, presumably anything would be, might, or, Depending on the topic, it might also be maybe have like a starter project so everyone starts from the same starting point. Mm -hmm. But if people are gonna be going their own way with separate languages, that doesn't work so well. Um, if we re-ran the same thing, probably the only thing I would do differently would be, you know, have a little bit more starter material at, for people at the beginning. Uh, that would probably only change like the first week. So, um, if there's a lot of demand for it, we can certainly do the same thing again, but I'm tentatively thinking, you know, try something different, uh, but I don't know what yet. Um, it'll be probably be something more on the, you know, fun side of programming, not, you know, let's all spend six weeks hacking on a database or message bus system or anything like that. So, any other ones? All right, well then I will hand it back to Zach.